Could you put those hands together for Jesus and you may be seated. Quickly, it is testimony time and we want to have the following come forth for their testimonies. If you hear your name, rush forward and broadcast the faithfulness of God to the people of God. Put your hands together as we receive Brother Uche Odimara. Uche Odimara. Divine favor. Brother, divine favor. Put those hands together for Jesus as we receive those ones. Sister, blessing Elisha. Again, blessing Elisha. Divine favor and Uche Odimara. This is our brother Uche Odimara. He said, shortly before the completion of this um, great edifice, the glory dome or the sanctuary, I beg your pardon, that God's servant gave an opportunity for anyone who wanted to connect with what God was doing here through sacrifice. And he said before then, he had been putting some money, monies aside because he had this plan to set up a studio, a recording studio. And then when this call for sacrifice was made, he was led by the Spirit to take what he had put aside and sow as a seed, which he did. He said in the space of one year, things began to add up. Doors began to open up. God surpassed his expectations or expectation that just within the space of one year, he was able to open a record standard studio, record label standard studio. You know, that was beyond what he expected. God deployed resources in his direction, and he's not taking that for granted. Put those hands together for Jesus. Secondly, secondly he said, last week, Monday, he received an SMS from his workplace that he was, he's been promoted. And then, yes, so a seed of hand clap at least. That he was promoted on Monday. And shortly afterwards in the evening, he received another text message because there arose a conspiracy in his workplace and some people came together and said, why should he be, be promoted? And before you knew what was happening, that promotion was withdrawn. But on Tuesday which was the following day, he came here for the healing and deliverance service. That was just last week, right? And towards the end of the service, God's servant declared that whatever belonged to you in the hands of an individual, an organization, or any system was coming in your direction in a hurry. That was a word that he held on to. Before the end of that Tuesday, he received another SMS again from his workplace that your promotion has been upheld and he's stand promoted he's come to give god praise put those hands together for jesus you are expecting god to promote you and give you turn around congratulations this is our brother divine fever he said he got a job on the 8th of november um, last year with a pharmaceutical company in lagos and in december he was posted to abuja in January, he located Dunamis and began attending services and worshiping here. He said after their appointment, they were informed that um, they, they needed to work for six months on probation, in which case they were going to observe their performances. The first miracle was the fact that the job that he got the description and prescription for the drug that he got, job rather, that he got. He studied pharmacology. He has a B, uh, B pharma, BSc pharmacology and the job specification was meant to be for pharmacists and he got that job. That was the first testimony. Now, much later afterwards, yes, put those hands together for Jesus. Much later, it was now time for assessment. And then over 80 of them that were employed, he said, those that were pharmacists, uh, the, the, the results came out and everybody was served his or her letter of his or her performance or performances. And the pharmacists were telling him, young man, that we have seen our result, oh, that uh, we scored 70, we scored this. 
So he became afraid. If pharmacists cannot get the cut off, get the cut off point, what about me? Long story made short. When his result came, he scored about 90. And he was confirmed. Just about 11 of them were confirmed out of over 80. And he's here to give God praise, not taking that favor for granted. Congratulations, divine favor. Our sister, Blessing Elisha, is here to testify on behalf of her, young, her sister. She said last week, Sunday at night, at about, okay, Sunday crossing to Monday now, at about um, 12 or 1 a.m., within that, that period, she received a distress call that her younger sister wasn't feeling well. And because of the nature of the time, she said, okay, I was going to see her the following day. The following day when she went to see her, already the sister was admitted in the hospital. It was so terrible. Sister, when she got to the hospital, sister was lifeless. Sister was admitted in the emergency unit. Spoke to the sister. Sister wasn't responding. And then she went to the hospital with a bottle of oil blessed from this altar. So what came to her mind was to administer that anointing oil on the lifeless body of her sister. She said she took some of the oil and sprinkled on her sister. Remembered also that she had the tongues of fire on her phone. Plugged the sister's ears with um, the tongues of fire. Sister began to manifest on the hospital bed. Began to scream and manifest. Before you knew what was happening, she coughed and she came back to existence. And everybody, the medical attendants, everybody was surprised. Sister, what did you do? Medical science had tried everything to bring her back. We couldn't. And she said, I only applied this oil and the tongues of fire. She did the same also for someone on admission. The same effect. And she's not taking that for granted. For the help of God that we we'll always receive on this mountain. Put those hands together for Jesus. And congratulations, our sister. Jesus, a big clap of friend for the things he has done. God will intercept the agenda of hell in your life and in your family members in the name of Jesus. She applied the oil and the tongues of fire and God responded from heaven. From today, the Lord shall respond to you in Jesus' mighty name. We'll be looking at the seeds of destiny today and the message is very, very important. We go through it. He boasted and bowed to death. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11, the Bible said, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Voltaire was a Frenchman who stood on the top of his own roof one day boastfully declared that after 100 years, the Bible would be a forgotten and unknown book. The Bible would be an outdated piece of antiquity that will not be used by anybody, but will found, found only in some dusty museums and in remotely disconnected parts of the world. This is paraphrased. But one day, he succumbed to the appointment of death. He died a miserable death. As he was about to die, the nurse that stood by him heard him screaming of the hellfire where he was going. Today, the same house he stood upon and boasted that the Bible would become outdated, became the headquarters of World Bible Society. Give Jesus a big clap of friends. Where Bibles are sent to the world, 100 years after, he died and passed over to eternity because no one is too big or too arrogant to escape the appointment with death. No one is big enough to escape the inevitable appointment. Beloved, it is appointed unto men once to die and after that, judgment follows. 
that was also read in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Therefore, live your life to please your maker before the curtain of time is drawn and the dimensions of eternity are opened. Remember, there is no one too big enough to escape the inevitable appointment. God's servant is praying for you and is declaring, he said, the Lord and grace you not to waste your life and existence in the earth in the name of Jesus. You can say it better. The Lord and grace you not to waste your life and your existence in the earth in Jesus' name. We have three, two assignments from this teaching today. The first is refuse to live carelessly on earth. Second, live your life to please your maker before the curtain of time is drawn. Lift your hands and let's say this prayer together. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me again about the inevitable appointment with death. Help me to adjust my ways and live right so I can end in eternity with you when it is time. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. We'll be receiving the minister of Dunamis voice and they're taking us further in the service today. They'll be ministering songs received and written by God's servant, the senior pastor. And as you listen, God is going to give you a visitation. Give Jesus the praise and let's receive Dunamis voice.
to Jesus, celebrate him. You are worthy, Lord, of our praise. You are worthy, Lion of Judah. You are the one who Jesus, wave your hands to Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and give him worship, give him praise, give him honor. Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor. We adore you here tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Somebody that is excited to be here tonight, clap your hands, oh yeah, people. Clap your hands, oh yeah. Joyful noise unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Give him a clap, a leap of joy, a shout of victory. Woo! Hey, 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 hey. Somebody is about to shift level tonight. If you are the one, let your amen roar like thunder. Please be seated in this, in God's presence. Hallelujah. Praise God. I am excited to be here tonight. And I am very grateful to God and to the leadership of the commission, our Father and the Lord, for this opportunity to just give a charge here tonight. And I believe that somebody shall be blessed here tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, say louder, Amen. amen. Say louder, Amen. 
quickly open your Bible to Joel chapter 2. The book of Joel chapter 2. And in verse 23 to 27. The Bible says. Be glad then ye children of Zion. And rejoice in the Lord your God. For he had given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down. For you the rain, the former rain. And the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the flour shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you. The years that the locusts have eaten. Who is God talking about? The canker worms and the caterpillars and the pampa worm. The palmer worm and my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God. That had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Woo! This is a prophetic word for somebody. Let your amen roar like thunder. It's a charge unto praise. And I tie to the charge quickly. Recovery praise. Somebody shout, I shall recover all. Our objective tonight is understanding the connection between praise and restoration or recovery. By way of introduction, I'd like to say that praise is a spiritual force with multi-dimensional virtue. You look at our text today. Reveals that gladness or joy in the Lord, which is praise, has so much to offer for somebody here tonight. What are the virtues of praise or rejoicing in the Lord from our text? Number one, quickly. Praise provokes spiritual revival. Spiritual revival. In verse 23 of Joel chapter 2b. And the Bible says... And the letter rain in the first month. He said, and for he had given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. This is rain of revival. Rain of revival. Anytime there is praise, there is revival. And revival brings strength, revival brings energy. There are people that came here depressed tonight. You came here as if there is no hope. You came here weak. By the power of praise tonight. You shall be revived tonight. You shall be revived tonight. Let your amen roar like thunder. Revival brings strength. Brings energy. It brings direction. Brings progress. It brings speed. Number two. Praise provokes supernatural abundance. Supernatural abundance. The realm of overflow. That is the realm of no lack. In verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat. And the fire shall overflow. With wine and oil. Remember in the time of Jesus. John chapter 6. And 11 to 12. Jesus gave thanks. And the fishes. Multiplied. And the bread multiplied. Was able to feed. Over 5,000 people. And they were overflowed. 10 baskets. I want to prophesy to somebody here. Under the sound of my voice. As we praise tonight. Overflow shall be your portion. Supernatural abundance shall be your portion. If you are saying amen. Let your amen roar like thunder. Number three. Praise provoke divine recovery. Or restoration. Anywhere there is praise, there must be restoration. There must be recovery. Restoration of years. Years of struggles. Years of delay. Years of denied opportunities. Years of disappointment. Years of struggle. Anytime praise goes up, situation that look as if is not going to work again begins to work. Look at what happened in John chapter 11, verse 40 to 43. The case was a terrible situation. The, the Bible says, when Jesus came, they say Lazarus by now stinketh. 
by now stinketh. And our father in the Lord said, There is nothing that is too lost that cannot be recovered. When praise goes up, there must be restoration. I don't know what the devil stole from you. I don't know what the devil denied you of. I prophesy to somebody here by the mantle of the commission, you shall be restored tonight. You shall be restored tonight. You lost your job before the end of the year, it shall be restored. You lost something before the year ends, it shall be restored. Somebody shall power. And number four is existence in satisfaction. When praise goes up, people exist in satisfaction. People exist in fulfillment. People exist in fulfillment. That is a life of no regrets. And finally,